Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard, our only authority for truth. That which we measure, everything that we believe, everything that we have been told, we measure it according to the Bible. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 26th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of Ephesians, and the last time we were together, we talked about the unity of the body of Christ, that we are here to serve one another, and God has given each of us desires, talents, and maybe what we would consider gifts in order to edify each other. And so the question I left you with is, what is that that God has given you to use in the body, and are you using it for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I hope that you have been able to answer that, and you are living it out in your life each day. Now, having that in mind, we pick up in verse 17 today, and Paul basically says, because you understand that you are in the body of Christ, do not walk as other Gentiles walk. Do not walk, do not live, do not act as the people of this world. Do not participate, do not chase after, do not pursue the things that the people of this world do. For they do so in the vanity of their mind. Now, what this means here in verse 17 is that they are empty in their minds. They are worthless in their minds. And the reason is, is because they do nothing to benefit the kingdom. Everything is about them and this life because they have had their understanding darkened and they are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Again, they live under the veil of this world and they can't see beyond that veil. They're frightened to even look beyond that veil, to look into eternity, because they knew if this was their last day on earth, they would live life much differently, because they are about to meet their maker. But because that day seems so far off for them, and they don't think about death, they're consumed by the idea of life, and getting everything out of it that they possibly can they are blind in their heart. In verse 19, they are past feeling, which means they're past grief, they're past conviction, they're past discipline. They've seared their conscience by compromising so many times over and over, and they've given themselves unto a life with no restraint. That's what lasciviousness means. And to work all uncleanness with greediness. They're never satisfied. They always want more, no contentment, and certainly no settling for simplicity. But you, dear friend, you, dear child of God, you have not so learned this in Christ. This is not what you read about in the Word. You've read the letter of Timothy that says, if you are a Christian, you will suffer. You've read the sayings of Jesus when Jesus himself said, don't think yourself above the master. And if the master has nowhere to lay his head, why do you think yourself any better? You've read the letter of Paul unto the church at Colossae, which tells us to set our minds on things above, not on things of the earth. You're familiar with the writings of James, Jesus' half-brother, when he told us he who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You know that you are to live righteously, soberly, denying this world and pursuing the kingdom to come. And these are the things that you've learned in Christ. So if you've heard these things in verse 21, if you've been taught these things, if you've read these things, then you know that these are truth because the truth lies in Jesus and Jesus exists within you. He resides within you. Knowing this in verse 22, put off the former behavior that your old man found pleasure in. 
For those things are corrupt according to the deceitful lust, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Notice that, friend, the spirit of your mind. We know from former teachings and from the things we read in the Bible that the mind is the enemy of God. And as his followers, we are to reprogram our mind, forcing our mind to think upon the things of God and not upon the things of the flesh. And we do this through proper training, proper teaching. That's why we have to be so very careful of who we listen to in this world. Because there are many that will tell us half-truths. But what about the other half that is a lie? These things simply cause confusion. And so we need to find someone who is teaching the pure, unadulterated, uncompromising word of God. And we need to place ourselves under them. And if I might recommend someone, I would highly encourage you to listen to Grace To You Ministries through John MacArthur, Dr. John MacArthur, the greatest theological mind in the earth today. And in his thoroughness of explaining scripture, he is going to feed the spirit of your mind and you will grow in the grace and beauty of the Lord Jesus and in the simplicity and the complexity of his truth. This is how you put on the new man. This is how you feed the new man. This is how you grow the new man within you, in your understanding, your enlightenment of the truth of the Lord Jesus and his holy word. And God will become larger in your life through righteousness and true holiness. Well, if he points out true holiness here, friends, then there's certainly a false holiness. And we want to make sure we don't fall into a false holiness a false righteousness, a false Christianity, because then we are only deceiving ourselves. We must place ourselves under the authoritative teaching of the word of God and conform ourselves to it, whether the old man likes it or not. And in doing this, it is obvious that we will put away lying. We will speak truth to every man that we encounter. We will be angry, but we will not sin. Did you know that the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day? And if God is angry with the wicked and his spirit lies within us, we too are angry about the wickedness that plagues the earth, that plagues mankind. And so this is a righteous anger that stews within us because we long for the holiness of of the Lord Jesus throughout the earth. And it is that anger at the sin that we have the ability as his people to exercise and yet without sin. And look at verse 27, be very careful to give place to the devil. And Paul gives us an example of this when he's not speaking about fornication, adultery, homosexuality, drunkenness, or the other larger sins that we would consider. But if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so what Paul is saying is that a device of Satan is for us to harbor grudges, to hold bitterness against one another, to be unforgiving, and in this way we give place to the devil. But in chapter 4, verse 27 of Ephesians, he says, be very careful to give place to the devil. The person that you were before, you are no longer. So if you stole before, still no more. Instead, labor with your hands, doing good for others and giving to those that are in need. And let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. No corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good to the use of building up others 
that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Boy, that's a mouthful and one that many of us need to exercise. That will put an end to gossip. That will put an end to bashing others. That will put an end of speaking evil. That will put an end to cursing and dirty jokes and so many other things that we as the people of God sometimes allow ourselves, we allow our lips to speak. But Paul, the Holy Spirit through Paul says, if it doesn't edify, if it doesn't build up the person who is listening, then keep your mouth shut. That's a very frank warning, a very frank admonition, a very frank command for us, friends. And by doing this, you will not bring deep felt sorrow. You will not grieve the spirit of God. So let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all clamor or raising the voice, which is what happens when we allow our temper to take us over. And Paul says, exercise some discipline. Let all evil speaking, let these things be put away from you with all malice or evil thoughts and be kind to one another. Be tender hearted to one another. Forgive one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. And that's why Jesus said, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And so if there's anyone in your life that you are harboring bitterness against, if there's anywhere in your heart you're holding a grudge, friends, I plead with you to make it right today. Make it right with God and make it right with the person. And don't go into the entire story again. Don't offer any excuses. Certainly don't cast any blame. Just simply say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I wronged you. And it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. In God's eyes, you're wrong because you're the one holding it in your heart. And the only thing that will keep you from offering that confession, making things right with both God and man, is the pride that exists within your heart. And if there's pride in your heart, that too makes you wrong with God. And so if you cherish your relationship with God, if you want him to continue working and blessing in your life, spiritual blessings, friend, heed the words of Paul today. Don't let another day go by until you've made things right. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're here with us in the word of God. And I pray that God's Holy Spirit is in the deepest parts of your heart, the deepest parts of your soul and spirit. And he's using the fires from the altar of God, his truth, to burn away all that does not belong, all that does not glorify Jesus, all that does not honor God in the full trinity of who he is, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I pray that all of these impurities are being burnt away till all will be left, will be pure gold, gold that will be found worthy as an offering and a sacrifice unto your Lord, King, and Master. Well, now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.